Welcome to EPG Pachala. My name is Devisha. I'm a faculty at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Today we are going to cover the module on uh, sustainable development from the paper Environment and Society. Uh, basically, the module introduces the concept of sustainable development, the history of uh, uh, sustainable development and the uh, developments uh, that has happened till now. The key uh, discussions uh, for today's class would be on uh, the introduction to sustainable development, history of the concept, uh, how a sustainable development is portrayed, sustainability in different spheres of development, millennium development goals and sustainable development goals. Let's start with uh, the introduction of uh, sustainable development. Now the concept of sustainable development is a result of growing awareness of the global links between mounting environmental problems, socio-economic issues uh, to do with poverty and inequality and concerns about a healthy future for humanity. The concept has been uh, widely discussed and has uh, a variety of meanings per se. It is accepted by corporate, governments, social activists and environmental activists and each has their own interpretation on what sustainable development means. Uh, more than 100 of the world's largest companies uh, in mining industries, oil and gas refineries, manufacturers of autos, chemical cement, electricity generation, um, drugs and biotechnology services such as banking and finance are all members of the Business World Council for Sustainable Development. That is the first aspect which comes, which covers a corporate body. Now, many environmental uh, protection organizations, including multinational organizations like WWF, that is the Worldwide Fund for Nature, Greenpeace, etc., are committed to sustainable development. Although they are very critical about the companies who are members of the WBCSD that we had discussed earlier. Organizations and individuals with concerns about environment, uh, environmental and social issues do support sustainable development but disagree with the outlook of international economic organizations. Let's start with the history of this concept that is sustainable development. So to motivate countries to work and pursue sustainable development collectively, UN established the Brundtland, Com uh, Br the Brundtland Commission in 1983. The Brundtland Commission released uh, a report which is uh, known as the Our Common Future, also known as the Brundtland Report, in October 1987, a document which coined and defined the term, meaning of the term, that is a sustainable development. Now, uh, the definition that uh, Brundtland Commission uh, gave uh, to uh, our sustainable development is uh, that uh, the environment is where we live and the development is what we do all do in attempting to improve our lot within that abode. Now, these two are inseparable is what the definition speaks about. Sustainable development is the kind of development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. Now, let's uh, talk about, you know, two main concepts in uh, sustainable development. The, uh, you know, there are two key concept one is the concept of need and the other is the idea of limitations now let's look at the concept of need the concept of uh, need uh, is in particularly in particular the essential needs uh, of the world's poor people is what covers as a concept of need now to which they should also be given overriding priority the second aspect is the idea of limitations which is imposed by the state of technology and uh, social organizations on the environment's ability to meet both present and future needs so Brundtland's definition and the ideas uh, expressed recognize the dependency of humans on environment to meet needs as well-being um, and well-being is uh, in a much wider sense than merely exploiting nature per se or just resources per se. So ecology and eco economy are uh, becoming ever more interwoven that is locally, regionally, globally, nationally, any, any, any sphere you say it is getting interwoven. The report uh, stresses that humanity, whether in an industrialized or a rural uh, subsistence uh, society, depends for security and basic existence on the environment, uh, the economy and 
our well-being now in, uh, and in the future will also need the support of environment per se. Now let's come to the topic on uh, portrayal of sustainable development. Now sustainable development is often presented as being divided into the economy, the government and society. Now the three sectors are being presented as um, a, a three interconnected rings and the model has a conceptual simplicity basically. So often sustainable development is presented as aiming to bring the three together in a balanced way reconciling conflicts per se. Here you can see the three rings that I was talking about which is the environment, uh, society and eco economy. This is the first uh, you know way uh, one way of presenting the three uh, aspects um, or the relationship between society, economy and environment. Now the weaknesses and limitations of this model that we have discussed is that uh, the view uh, that there is a separation and even autonomy of the society, economy and environment from each uh, other takes a compartmentalized approach to sustainable development. The separation neglects the connections between the economy, society and environment. It leads to an um, assumption that building capital can replace or substitute for an, uh, natural resources and systems and completely ignores the fact that any amount of uh, afforestation or plantations cannot substitute a forest. Genetic engineering cannot replace biodiversity and there is no technology that can con reconstruct the atmosphere or the ozone layer. So a sectoral approach can divert attention from asking questions that are important to getting to the core of sustainable development such as um, those, of, um, those about the nature of our society what the policy priorities are and how decisions are made and in whose interest. The wider uh, social issues often fall off the sustainable development agenda per se. So environmental economists uh, discuss about the environmental impacts of business such as pollution, uh, biodiversity loss and degradation of uh, habitats are uh, these are all unpaid costs or, or exp externalities per se. In such cases how can the corporate pay uh, for the loss that you know um, uh, that they have made and, um, and, and who should they, they pay these costs to? It is impossible to imagine uh, money compensating um, an organism or humans uh, uh, for loss of habitat on which they depend. There are many uh, social costs that business cannot pay for uh, such, uh, such as unemployment or a loss of culture or damage to health or as I was explaining you know um, a loss of forest uh, or plantation wherein biodiversity is lost. So uh, to cover all this another uh, frame that we would uh, talk about is uh, a more realistic presentation of the relationship between society, economy and environment are the economy nested within society uh, which is which in turn is nested within the environment per se so human society depends on environment although in contrast the environment would continue without society the economy depends on society and the eco environment uh, actually exists without the economy the effect of pretending that the economy and society are each a unified whole is to ignore diversity and dif a difference and instead gives a precedence to the dominant parts. So here you can see that economy then comes the society and within uh, the environment frame both the economy and uh, society is uh, existed. So that, uh, you know, as discussed, there's a problematic space with respect to having uh, economy and society within the uh, environment frame. The third uh, model that we can uh, see is the environment and biodiversity um, as an important part of human sustainability per se. So the changes in science and technology, art and culture are stimulated by environmental diversity. Vandana Shiva a noted environmentalist points to how global capitalism exploits all form, of di all form of diversity for profit. Sadly, it risks destroying that very diversity with dangerous consequence for people and the environment. So here, uh, the presentation of relationship between society, economy and environment is thus 
uh, uh, the, uh, within the environment we have the human activity and well-being uh, which is stored within the environment realm so the what we explained earlier the needs uh, in particular uh, with uh, the world's poor is something that is not seen in the current scenario so sustainable development basically strives to uh, provide uh, the priority the overriding priority uh, to the needs of the poor per se the next aspect is the idea of limitations which is imposed uh, by the uh, state of technology and uh, social organizations on the environment's ability to meet both present and future needs this is something that we uh, you know explained just uh, you know the previously uh, what i would want to explain here is that the future needs and the present needs also includes uh, the environment that uh, we are part of so whatever we consume this uh, at present may not be present in the future if we over consume it so the again the sustainability aspect of development is reiterated in this aspect of um, uh, key concepts uh, that we have already discussed we've discussed about the um, relationship between the economy environment and society now let's move on to the next topic which is the principles of sustainable development Hatton uh, in 1999 outlines five equity uh, uh, principles so i'm going to explain each of these five uh, equity principles the first one is futurity this is basically the intergenerational equity the next one uh, uh, he talks about is the social justice that basically is nothing but intragenerational equity uh, the third uh, uh, principle that uh, we would be uh, discussing is the transfrontier responsibility, which basically is the geographical equity. The next one is the procedural uh, um, um, equity, where, uh, which, which is basically people treated openly and fairly. And the final uh, principle is the inter interspecies equity because uh, um, basically it is the importance of biodiversity. So these principles can be summarized as futurity to give uh, regard for the future of um, needs of future generations, equity uh, um, um, covering social justice regardless of class, uh, gender, race, etc., or where they live and part uh, and participation, uh, so that uh, participate, so that people are able to shape their own futures. Now we will move on to uh, different uh, spheres of uh, development uh, that sustain um, and uh, sustainable uh, sustainable development per se, uh, which is uh, the first one we will be discussing is on the agriculture. Now sustainable agriculture consists of environment friendly uh, methods of farming for example organic farming that allow the production of good and rare uh, food and rearing of live uh, livestock without damage to human or uh, natural habitats now it prevents damaging uh, effects of fertilizers pesticides and weedicides onto soil water by, uh, water biodiversity as well as on human work human working or living on the farm or in neighboring areas now the concept of sustainable agriculture includes transfer of uh, improved natural resources biotic and economic uh, base rather than one which has been depleted or polluted new ideas of sustainable uh, agriculture include uh, permaculture agroforestry mixed farming um, multiple cropping and crop rotation many methods of certification sustainable uh, sustainability standards uh, exist like which includes organic uh, certification uh, fair wild certification etc these certifications help a consumer to choose products which are have been manufactured following the principles of sustainable development so um, one very good example of sustainable agriculture is the pokali farming um, uh, in kerala uh, it is seen in the uh, uh, wetland ecosystem, the uh, coastal ecosystem, wetland ecosystem in Kerala, where they have cyclical fish prawn cultivation per se. So here uh, they do not use any man, um, you know, fertilizers or pesticides. They go by um, six months for uh, agriculture and six months for uh, fish prawn cultivation. This is a very natural form of uh, agriculture and uh, fish prawn uh, cultivation that was 
uh, carried out for many many years in um, Kerala. So uh, sustainable agriculture um, is also um, another example would be um, uh, farmers, the, um, the subsistence farmers in uh, Wayanad or any other tribal belt who do not use uh, any other external factors uh, for uh, productivity per se. These are subsistence form of uh, agriculture but productivity can also be um, enhanced by say crop rotation, um, a crop pattern, you know changing uh, crop patterns along uh, you know um, considering the uh, monsoons or considering the rainfall, considering the sunlight that they receive etc. So these are already followed and it has to be promoted per se. The next uh, um, area that we are going to cover is energy. Sustainable energy is clean and can be given over a long period of time. Unlike fossil fuels that most countries are using, renewable energy also produces little or no, uh, even no pollution. In India, renewable uh, energy, hydroelectric solar and wind energy are being promoted. Solar energy has recently become available very easily. For example, this has uh, solar energy which uh, basically gives uh, electricity to most of the hostels uh, that we have. Another example would be uh, the solar panels that are installed in the Cochin, uh, you know, airport, the Cochin International Airport. Now, mining for uh, non-renewable uh, uh, resources, um, uh, sources of energy, fossil fuels, have an a direct impact on environment um, um, and as, as far as uh, environment is concerned people are part of it and it impacts us as well. Several communities in Orissa, Chhattisgarh and Northeast India has protested against mining in their regions. Toxicants uh, from coal, uh, nuclear power plants, uh, refineries has threatened health of local communities. So as renewable energy uh, becomes more common, it, is, it will provide better social equity uh, to communities. The next uh, um, uh, area that we are going to cover is the technology. A core concept in uh, sustainable development uh, is that innovative technology can assist human, uh, humans to meet their developmental needs and such technology is often referred to as a, an appro uh, appropriate technology. This has been an ideological uh, movement originally articulated as intermediate technology by the economist uh, E. F. Uh, Schumacher. In his influential work, Small is Beautiful and today uh, covers a wide range of uh, technologies. Both uh, Schumacher and many modern day proponents of appropriate technology also emphasize the technology as human centered. So. Um, one aspect, one example of uh, technology uh, that is used as uh, sustainable technology is uh, solar panels that are used, uh, solar parks that are promoted by uh, government of India and also windmills, uh, for example, Tamil Nadu ha in Coimbatore especially, they have a lot of uh, windmills that promote sustainable energy, wherein we do not have to use uh, uh, non-renewable resources like coal and you know um, hydroelectricity uh, power and we focus on uh, renewable resources like sunlight and wind. Now uh, we will be covering the um, aspect uh, which is business. The uh, most broadly accepted criterion for uh, corporate uh, sustainability constitutes a firm's efficient use of natural capital. This eco uh, efficiency is usually calculated as the economic value added by a firm in relation to its aggregated ec ecological impact. This idea has been promoted by uh, World Business Council for Sustainable Development as uh, you know, they are part of that organization. The uh, mainstream environmental groups uh, such as uh, Friends of the Earth, Greenpeace, WWF are largely in the reform group and increasingly has moved uh, towards um, grassroots activism and mass prot protest has been made uh, to put and even to political lobbying uh, and working with business and government per se. We have covered uh, so far the different spheres of uh, um, the sustainable development uh, which includes uh, agriculture, energy, technology etc. Now we will be covering the uh, Millennium Development Goals. In 2000, after a decade of uh, Na United Nations conferences and summits, world leaders came together at the Na Na United Nations headquarters in New York and adopted the Na United Nations Millennium Declaration. So the declaration committed nations to have a new global partnership to reduce extreme poverty and set out a series of eight time bound targets 
with a deadline of 2015 that has become known as the Millennium Development Goals. Now, what are the Millennium Development Goals? We'll go uh, one by one. The first uh, Millennium Development Goal is to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. The second one is uh, ach to achieve universal primary education, followed by pro to promote gender equality and empower women. This is followed by uh, uh, the next uh, Millennium Development Goal, which is to reduce child mortality, um, followed by improve maternal health, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria and other diseases, ensure environmental sustainability and to develop a global partnership for development. So Millennium Development Goals were indicators that establish measurable, universal, agreed objectives for preventing deadly diseases, dealing with extreme poverty and hunger, and expanding primary education to all children as development priorities. The legacy and achievements of the Millennium Development uh, Goals uh, per se provide us with valuable lessons and experiences to begin work on the new goals. So the Sustainable Development Goals are um, an urgent call to shift the world onto a more sustainable path. Now we would be basically covering on the Sustainable Development Goals. The Sustainable Development Goals were formulated at the uh, UN Conference on uh, Sustainable Development in Rio in 2017. In September 2015, the United Nations General Assembly formally adopted the Universal uh, Integrated and Transformative 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, and it is a set of 17 sustainable development goals. The objective was to produce a set of um, universal goals that meet the urgent environmental, political and economic challenges faced uh, by our world today. The goals are to be implemented and achieved in every country from the year 2016 to 2030. These 17 goals build on the achievements of the Millennium Development Goals and replace them includes new areas such as climate change, economic inequality, innovation, so sustainable consumption, peace and justice among other priorities. The goals are interconnected. The success of one goal depends on the other. The Sustainable Development Goals uh, coincided with another uh, historic agreement uh, reached in um, 2015 at the COP21 Paris Climate Conference. The Shendai Framework for uh, Disaster Risk Reduction, the Climate Resolutions and the Sustainable Development Goals provide a set of uh, common standards and achievable targets to reduce carbon emissions, achievable uh, targets to manage the risk of climate change and also natural disasters and to have a better comeback uh, after a crisis. Now, sustainable development goals are uh, um, cover issues that affect all humans and even environment um, and is a very important aspect that one needs to look into. Um, the discussion so far, we have completed what uh, sustainable development is. We've also looked into various spheres of sustainable development, the key concept uh, uh, behind sustainable development, the Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Goals. Now for further enhanced reading, I would suggest you to look into e-text and the uh, e-Pachala section for uh, resources in that. Um, and I hope that you have enjoyed today's class. Thank you.